Hello everyone, this is Johannes. And this is Cinema. And you are watching Board Gaming Ramblings. And welcome back to Keep or Cull, where we play all the games and decide if you want to keep them or cull them. Yes, we are back with 11 games today. Yes. There is like a suite of trick-taking shedding games, so we're gonna go through that. Everything is timestamped, so if you're like no interest at all in that, you're gonna skip it. And then we have some bigger stuff at the end, which I think is gonna be interesting for a lot of you, but we're gonna go through all because I think it's fun to keep or kill almost everything we play. Yeah. So we're gonna start today on your side. This is a review copy of a small game called... Confusing Lands. This is a small, it's called a tiny game series. Yeah. It is like an 18 card game where you're placing cards, trying to score points. Are you ready yes. for the boom? Okay. One, two, three, boom. Cull. Yes. You got your cull or cull paddle? I have paddle? my special cull or cull paddle. <laughs> yes. Uh, this was fun. I enjoyed it, but I'm never going to play it again. Yeah, what you're doing in this game is that you have two of these double-sided uh, like terrain cards. Yes. And you're placing them like interlapping. Overlapping yes. each other and you're trying to ch choose something with scorings But if you choose a lot of scorings you will get negative points if you don't score them well enough It gives me that kind of same feeling as Lost Cities where like oh I don't want to start this scoring yeah. because I have to get at least that many yes. points on it Which I enjoyed but then again it was not Super exciting, but if you're like looking for a small little card game, I guess it might be interesting. You are only laying down like not a lot of cards. No, eight. Is it like eight? Yes. Yeah. So I didn't feel like I had enough time to build anything no. cool up. So I didn't get this, haha, I play this and it's a lot of points feeling that but, I want from. But it's a very short game. It's like yes. a 10 minute game. So it's, it's, it's made for that. And now we're going to go into some trick taking games. We're going to start with a small little, very weird trick taking game. Are you ready for the boom? Yes. Are you ready for the boom? Boom. Okay, one, two, three, boom. Boom. You could use your boom cat because I... it's keep on the oh, other yes. side. Yes. But why are you, I don't understand. Why are you calling a trick taking game? Yes, you are still struggling with the, this concept. No, no, I would not call this because it's a great game. It, it is cool. Let but me explain it. Yes. Or do you want to? No, yeah, you are playing it. cards. Like in a trick taking game, there's suits and there's numbers. But in this game, they're separated. So you, on your first turn, you're going to play a suit and a number, and then you're going to have a random hand, of course, with some suits, some numbers. So on your turn, you will be able to then only play one card, which is then changing either the suit or the number. So if somebody leads with a color and you have that color already, you can only play the same suit if you have it, or you can then play a number card because you can't play trump because you actually have the, the color so it makes the color, the trump, the color and the number very weird. It's a very weird game and I, I liked it. Yeah, because of the way that you split the suit and the numbers, you suddenly have a lot of cards in your hand mm -hmm. that does not exist kind yes. of yep. and it really depends on what the other players are playing and also what you are playing because then you're kind of eliminating your options suddenly uh, it is a cool game it's a really wonky one yeah uh, so here I feel like there is a lot more to explore but of the ones that we've tried so far that's not my favorites yes it is but one of my favorites we're I, keeping it I also love that so you are bidding as in most uh, or m many of the ones we play that works very well you're bidding so even though you have like but it's, it's harder to know if it's a hard, a good or a bad hand. Mm -hmm. Because you could be in a position like, oh, I'm winning this. Oh, no, I'm winning this. I'm winning this because of the way that you play Ooh. one or the other. But this has the coolest components because yes. it has these buttons yes. and the smaller buttons that you put inside the bigger buttons when you win the tricks. It's true. So now you're, okay, you're changing I'm keeping the it. keys. Yes. <laughs> Next up is a trick-taking game. It is... Orem. Orem. This is from Panasaurus, so it's like less weird. This is like a smaller one. This is from an actual bigger publisher. Mm -hmm. And this is a team game. So uh, let's talk about it. Are you ready? Yeah. One, two, three. Boom! Boom! It's a keep. I needed my regular paddle for this yes. one. Uh, this was really fun. Mm -hmm. I absolutely enjoyed this one because of how you could try to outsmart the mm -hmm. other team. I like that it was both positive to lose a trick yes. and also to win it. And that when you're playing 
like opposite of the, each other, the teammates, you kind of, when you lead, it isn't that bad because your teammate can come into like almost the very end and do some shenanigans. Yeah, I really liked it. It was one of those where it took us kind of half the game to get into it, but it's it's very interesting. Like if, even um, I won with my my uh, my partner in this game. Hello, Pete. Uh, which was fun because yes. we had no, I, I had no th I had no like belief in us in the last round, and, and we won the tiebreaker. So, right yeah, there. it was yeah. so close. <laughs> I really enjoyed that you said like you you can win, you can lose, and you have different ways to score. Uh, very enjoyable, and now it's the next game. Oh, it's on your side. Which is this one called the Icarus Club. Another one. This is from uh, what are they called? They called mm, uh, called mm, New Mill Mill New Mill, I think. I don't remember, but it's a, a, a company that makes, makes this, made uh, some smaller ones that we have. Okay, mm -hmm. I don't know why I got into that, because I didn't know the name of it, but that's what I did. Now we're gonna do the paddle. Are you ready? Yes. One, two, three, boom! Boom! I was just delayed, because this I was took very the wrong paddle. Interesting. Yes, I love I love the name of this game, because it is the thing that you don't, you want, don't want to fly too close to the sun in this game. I had not thought about that, ah, but you it haven't. makes sense. Uh -huh. Because in this game, if you have the most points, you lose. Mm -hmm. And the way that Looser. it is, that you have like uh, a row a row of cards yes. and that dictates what suit will win. And Basically also you have to lead with. Yes. So it's not a show. So if you are the leader, you're not choosing the suit. That's true. And, but if you win, you can take one of the cards that were in the trick and like do for re to replace one. So you kind of decide what will be scored mm -hmm. for the remainder of the game. And you want to get a lot of points, but not too much. Yeah. And it's kind of a double there. Yes. Because the pe person who have won the most cards during one round get nothing. Zero points. But if you are like next, like second best, every time you will get the most points mm -hmm. at the end of the game and that's, uh, then you lose. So you have to like balance. Yes, you don't want to have the most each round and you don't want to have the most at the end of the game. Mm -hmm. I really like the fact that you are changing up this like, it's basically, as a pretty, actually has a theme. Yeah. Like you're in a casino and it's like the, there's it's not a very good theme. Like you have a schedule of which games are going to be played, and that's the cards and the suits. And and as you're changing them, you also change how many cards are in that pile. Yes. So the winner of the trick is also getting that. So you could at the end you might not want to win anymore. And there's a pile that has like three, four cards. You might want to add to that so that somebody's going to win even more cards and hopefully get more than you if you are thinking you are in the lead. This is a really good one. Very, very much recommended. Next up. This is Strife. Is this a trick taking game? It is indeed. No. It isn't. It is, but it's a trick avoidance game. Like That's you, true. It is a trick taking game because you're taking tricks, but you don't want them. Mm -hmm. So it's a trick avoidance game and it is a game with things in it. Let's do the paddle. Yes. One, two, three, boom. Boom. See what I did there? Like a flippity flip. Flippity flip. It was like a magic trick. It's a boom. Boom. But it's not a magic trick. It's a very I bad like one. I like this trick taking game a lot because you have these different suits, but they're not equal. So yeah. one suit is like low numbers and then uh, higher and higher and stuff. Yes. <laughs> Explaining uh, <laughs> is my favorite thing to do. Well... Uh, are you trying to make me take over? Yes, please. Yes. <laughs> so you are playing cards and if you have the same card, you have to, like the leader, you have to continue with that. But if you don't, you can play something else. And this is one we played with, I think, yeah, we played with six people, and I think it's going to be best with the higher numbers. BDG agrees with that, because when you play those cards, and I play, let's say I play a red, I'm just going to make something up. I play a red, another one play a red, and then the next player doesn't have a red, so he plays a blue. And then the next player is thinking, oh, I don't have a red, I'm going to play a blue as well. And then the last player is like, this is, I decide something now, because if that player now is play blue, then blue is the color that is going to decide who wins the trick. So the lead color can change. Not the lead color because you have to play the same if you have it, but the winner color can change. Mm -hmm. And if it's the same, you can play, you will, the highest of those gonna win. But I will say this. This is the weirdest thing I've ever seen. There is a sheet in this game, which is like a variant, 
And it basically says, when this game was published, uh, self-published from the designer, the game was different, the rule was different, and somebody kind of misunderstood the rule and changed it when they published it for the first time, and now they added that at a variant, and when I read the variants, like, this is a much better game, so, and everybody on the internet agrees, play with the variant. Basically, if, if you play a highest card of a color, you nullify that color in the trick. So there's a lot of shenanigans going on here, and it's a meaner one because you're yeah. trying to make somebody take the trick. Mm -hmm. So I think it was great with six people, and I'm looking forward to play it again. Yeah, this was so fun, and it's so cool to, like, see what cards you have in hand and sometimes you don't decide you have just to follow but these stars trying to like see which is the highest number yes uh, when to play those mm -hmm. or reacting to what the other players do so so cool another keeper next up we're gonna have another trick taking game it's nine lives this is like an older version of it because this is this is a all play game but it's mm -hmm. from for, oh, it's a cat. Oh, yeah, I got it. I was doing that. I didn't really think about it. And then you continued. That was fun. I love explaining jokes. Makes them better. Board game tables. When it was board game tables. Now it's all play. And uh, they make a lot of these small uh, trick-taking games. And this one is very interesting. You are bidding with your little cat. You're bidding how many tricks you're getting. But you're kind of bidding actually on two or four numbers. Mm -hmm. So you, it's kind of wrap, wrap around. It didn't happen when we played. But let's say I bid on, I'm going to get the board here because it's easier to show you. If I bid here on 2 and 7, I put my little cat, this is my cat now, put it over here. Looking good in the plastic bag. Uh, I bid on 2 and 3. So what I do if I place it here, I also block that space. So nobody else can bid there, so you have to bid a specific place. And then I bid 2, 3 and I also bid 6, 7. So if I get 4, I'm going to have to try to get to 6. Or else I'm going to lose points. And also, depending on if you place only this into one or two, you're going to get or lose different points. And basically, if at the end of a round somebody has nine or more points, they're going to win. There's one more shenanigan with this game. And what is that? You can see... Well, there actually is two more shenanigans. Okay, you let me know. You got the other one. But yeah, you can see what suits people have. So you can kind of be like, okay, you don't have that color. So you will need to play something else. And maybe you have a lot then the people person have chump in People their person. high hands you know that will be a threat to uh -huh. your uh, trick well uh, the other thing is that when a trick is won you get to keep one of the cards in that trick That's true. in your hand and that also means that the, the game can be longer or short well you don't know exactly it? how yes. many tricks are going to be because it's going to end when one person is out of, of cards mm -hmm. so you don't exactly know the amount of tricks when you start the round so it's a good one did we do the keeper no, call oh we forgot. forgot okay let's do that now yes. i'm sorry one two three boom it's a call from me but i really enjoy it so we can keep it it's fine okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like i want to be like different cool, cool. yes but that, that's a cool one. Next up is Gorus Maximus. Maximus. This is also a trick-taking game. Let's it do is. the paddle this Let's time. Let's do it. Yeah. One, two, three. Boom! Boom! Oh, I almost did this. <laughs> that would change everything in my life until now. Well, well the, no, this is definitely a cult. Yes. Uh, this is um, a very straightforward trick-taking game. I would say too straightforward. Yes, that that's was like my one problem. Of, yeah. Yes. Uh, so if I'm playing, if I want like a straightforward, just normal trick-taking game, I would not choose this no, one. No. I didn't think like this was, had anything that made me excited for it. Nope. So if I, I out of the trick-taking games that we've played, this is so far uh, one of my least favorites. It had like some, it had like just like one little tweak where you were, it, you were trying to give some cards to people because there was negative points and yeah. positive points. So that was kind of okay. And also you could like change the trump mid trick. Yeah. But other than that, it didn't really do anything that exciting. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's a call. Next up, we don't have a trick taking game. We have a ladder climbing game, Yay. a shedding game. Something completely different. This is Haggis. Mm -hmm. Are you ready? Yes. Yes, let's do it. One, two, three, boom. Cool. What are you doing? I'm trying to be diversive and may have like a discussion 
And but this game is fantastic. It, it was very good, but out of the trick takers. It's not a trick taker. Out of the small card games yes. that you brought home so far, this wasn't my favorite of them. And But it was really cool. So in this game, you want to shed your hand. So you want to get rid of all the cards in your hand. And you do it kind of like in other shedding games. You want to like follow with the same amount of cards, the same like that as the leader has like a full same type. Yes, yeah. like of the same color or in like a sequence. And in this card you all, game, you also have these three like... Um, Court cards? Can, yes, yeah. that Jack you can you can add to your hand. As a joker? Yes. So, but it's risky because you, those cards are worth points. Mm -hmm. So if you play something and you think like, oh, my opponent can never overtake this. Mm -hmm. And then you see them kind of... Taking Can't. out, I'm just like, no, because I know that that was my best hand. Yes. <laughs> like, I can't overtake that again. Uh, and you want to, you want to, even though, like, you might not win the round, mm -hmm. you want to get uh, rid of as many cards as you want can either way, because the winner gets, like, all their uh, cards. yeah. A lot of points, potentially. Yeah, not all the cards gives points. There's only the three, the five, the seven, and the nine that's going to yes. give you points. And the court cards. So you're trying to score, and you have like a little haggis, a little pile of cards that you're going to get as well. Uh, it goes, I think it's either rounds or points. I don't remember if you play to until a number of points. I think it was until like 250 points, something mm -hmm. like that. I really like this. We only played it two. BDD has it as best with two. I like that too. Want to play that more? Mm -hmm. And that is that one. And now I think we're going over to other games. Yes, that's correct. Next up is Sacred Valley. This is a review copy. And mm -hmm. now let's do the paddle. Yes. One, two, three, boom. Boom. It's a double cow. Tell me about it. Uh, this game, you are planting crops. In the beginning, you can that's just... that's what you do. Yes. Yeah, yeah, basically. You're also harvesting them. Yes. Yes, so you do two things. Well, uh, and in the beginning, you can only plant, uh, like, your one type. Mm -hmm. And then you can, like, buy rights, I don't know, or gain knowledge to plant more. Yeah, in technology, it's called Yes. Basically. And you're basically b buying crops and then planting them. And you get, then, um, money to to like you want a big big space because the more mm -hmm. are uh, adjacent to each other the more money you get and you want to get a lot of money i think if you like to play mean very confrontational i think you will like this more than we did yes because we were. if you do that and we played it at four you can play with five i think we played four you can be very mean in this game try to block people try to get the things you want to be bigger and try to place that in ways it's a very straightforward game. I enjoyed it. I'm just not going to play it again, basically. I agree, but we were very nice to each other, and also, therefore, it turned a little boring. But yeah, yeah. because we just got yes, stuff we all were the so, time. Yeah, got a lot of stuff. Next up, we have a game that was spoken about and kind of released at Gen Con, and a lot of people have been speaking a lot about this game. Let's see what we thought about it. Yes, because that's what we do on this it's thing. It's the River of Gold. It is. It is a River of Gold. If you're only listening to this, hello. Okay. Are you ready? Oh, we'll do some Done. ASMR. One, it's called. Yes. two, three, boom! <laughs> it's a double cow. I, I think this is okay. I, people are saying, and I don't care if you like it, you can love it as much as you want. But I was excited for it because a lot of people are saying like, oh, this is a great gateway game. And I think it's fine. I think it's, I played it both physical and I played it again BGA after we played it and then I was like trying to find out is there something I'm missing here and I can see that people like it but for me it's just like it's just for the length and what I invest in it just just under what I want to get back mm -hmm. it's just like I am doing these things going through the motion and it's a bit random with the cards I get in my hand with like oh you're supposed to get four of this building there wasn't four of this building you got four of the building and got a lot of points or you got three of this and it's like this is just a bit too much of that for me to be like very excited about it so i don't want to play it more 
Yeah, I I enjoyed uh, some parts of it. Um, for example, that it looks really beautiful. It does. Uh, it's it's a great production, mm -hmm. absolutely. But I agree with you. I think um, I, I didn't mind the things that I did, but it's more the reason why I did them. Okay. That I I I was missing some like extra layer that made these decisions crunchy for me instead of being like, okay, I can do this. I guess and not having yeah some ultimate goal to go for in this mm -hmm. game we have one more game one of the biggest games is it on my side yeah. and a game yes well, yeah. <laughs> and a game I was trying so hard to not get can you not drop it on the floor no, see if yeah. I oh uh, I dropped something else on the floor but that's fine it's slay the spire this is a game that I have played you never played a video game no I have played it hours and hours and hours. I don't think I'm up to the point where Rob from Blue Pack Ping Pang, which you should listen to if you don't, he had played this over how many hours do you think? I don't know, but you're talking about the video game and not yes. the board game now, He had right? played it over 700 hours. That's a lot. I think probably I played it maybe 300 hours, something like that. I played it both on the iPad and the, the iPhone, so I don't think I can go and check. But I was like, I... Didn't want to play it. I didn't want to buy it because I had my thoughts about it and everybody was saying it was so good. And I was like, oh, I saw it in the store and I was like, oh, I'm going to get it so I can play it. So Because I feel like I also should play it because I played it, the video game so much. And it was kind of interesting to play it with you because you hadn't played it. Yeah. So let's do the keyboard call. Yeah. Are you ready? Yes. The paddle. Mm -hmm. One, two, three. Boom. It's a double cow. This did exactly what I thought it would do. Which was be slightly inspired, just way slower less action and exactly the same the only difference is that you play with two people or more and you can like cooperate on things so like sometimes you could play a car that could help me or stuff like that mm -hmm. with the, but it is slate aspire like 95 percent it's slate aspire and it was like it was fun to see the cards in in real life but other than that it's a video game made into a board game and it's just too slow. I think it's weird because the, the video game is a card game. So yes. it basically is a board game turned into a video game turned yes. into a board game again. And and therefore I think it works very well as a board game. Because uh, it's exactly the same game. Yeah. It works very well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think there's many implementations of video games. Mm -hmm. I can't come up with a single one right yes. now. But that I, I've played and be like... I don't understand why they've tried to make this a board game mm -hmm. because there is so much fiddly setup or whatever and I would be just like happy with doing it the video game mm -hmm. style with all the extra fluff. Yeah. I will say in this game that it worked, I didn't feel like we used a lot of time uh, like resetting our decks or like doing a lot of stuff to make this be playable mm -hmm. but if i would open an app that's easier yeah obviously and it's the same like it gives you and if i if we loved playing co-op mm -hmm. i think i would like it more oh yeah but for now it's just like we i would rather just sit on the couch and we both play slay the spire and talk about what we do yeah that's true like i would rather do that mm -hmm. i don't think we're ever gonna do that but i would rather do that but i would say though that this game makes me want to play slay the spire oh, the should. app because it was really fun this is fantastic yeah and those are the games that's a big pile of games it I'm is try helping you with that uh we only kept small games oh which is i'm nice. happy about that look at this so we kept one two three four five six and we called one two three four five that makes me happy yeah so what is your best and worst experience uh best experience i think uh oh i had a really fun with Caesar strife yeah um worst experience uh goros maximus yes, for me that is uh, my worst as well i think maybe the icarus club was my most like uh cool thing but i, I enjoyed all of these games cool so that's gonna be the end yeah. if you enjoy what we do you can subscribe to the channel how do you do it it is a button down oh. there you can see it with your eyes just focus your pupils and click on it yes and that is helpful and we enjoy you for that thank you so much i'm johannes i'm cinema and you've been watching board gaming ramblings Bye-bye.